my next guest went viral with her play on Jay-Z's hit 99 Problems, except in her TED Talk, she called it, I got 99 problems, palsy is just one. Masoon Zaid is also a best-selling author, actress. Fans have fallen in love with her in her current role as the cutthroat defense attorney, Zara Amir on ABC's General Hospital. But before her success on GH and the things that came after, it all started with that powerful TED Talk opening up about pursuing her dream in Hollywood while living with cerebral palsy. I got 99 problems and palsy is just one. <laughs> If, if there was an oppression Olympics, I would win the gold medal. I'm Palestinian, Muslim, I'm female, I'm disabled, and I live in New Jersey. <laughs> if you don't feel better about yourself, maybe you should. <laughs> Please welcome self-proclaimed, sit-down, stand-up comedian, Maysoon Zaid. Maysoon, thank you so much for joining us. You know, listen, I was looking and I said, I, I know that You've talked about using humor to diffuse uncomfortable situations. What is the difference in that and self-deprecation? Is it the same? I and mean, when you're writing your act, how do you play that out? Well, I think the most power, first of all, I'm a huge, huge fan. <laughs> and I'm always tweeting about how amazing your clothing is. <laughs> so I channeled my inner Cameron. And because we're women, inspiring women, I'm wearing Huda's Mercury Retro Oh, I love, see, makeup. that's what I love. So, Thank you. I love it's all that. In there. <laughs> um, you know, my comedy career, I, I, I chose to become a comedian because my dream in life was to be on General Hospital. And when I turned on the TV, I didn't see people who looked like me. Mm -hmm. Where I saw people was in the world of comedy, like Richard Pryor, the original Shaking Comic. And when I started doing comedy, it wasn't about being self-deprecating or teaching anyone anything. It was about having cerebral palsy was part of my story. Being disabled was part of my story. So I told my story and didn't really realize how controversial it was to be talking about these things because that was my story. And mm. then one year after I started comedy, 9-11 happened. Wow. And what I realized was, if I could get people to laugh, they'd be less likely to kill me. They might still do it, but they'd be less likely Masoon, to kill me. And oh that's how goodness. I discovered the power. Listen, uh, the two drink minimum, by the way, if you want this routine for you, I'm opening the comedy club for you now. <laughs> Maysoon, you know, you, you talked about this moment though. You talk, I know you wanted to be on General Hospital and that was one of your dreams, but early on you've told this story about wanting to be a dancer and you were at some camp and the divas were walking through assessing the children as you've described it and they asked you what was your dream and you said you wanted to tap dance with Savion Glover and the person overseeing the class said and this was the quote girl you are a cripple find another dream um, you share that story for obvious reasons when you hear it now with all that you've accomplished what do you hear and what do you feel? The first thing that I hear is that if I had listened, I wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. And I did tap dance on Broadway, not with Savion Glover yet, but I did do it. And uh, <laughs> there I am. As you want back in Glennon and Doyle, talk about that. Um, but I think it's one of the big reasons I started doing public speaking in addition to doing stand-up comedy was to tell all those other, you know, girls of color and Muslim girls who were being told that they should be sent back to their own country and disabled people who are being told we're not worth saving. I wanted to go out there and be like, no, you are worth doing yeah. this. You can do this, but also maybe you can't. And that's the whole point of find another dream. Your dream might not come true. I think it's really important for people to know. I love that you said that. Like a, yes, we yeah. run from failure or we think, okay, that dream didn't come true, so I give up. We don't all win. That's why I never like when they do the little soccer games and the kids get the same score. I'm like, no, someone lost. And you should tell yeah. them at age five that you didn't win and maybe go play basketball or something else. It's not for you. And but that's what you, Find Another Dream is find about. Find Another it's Dream. About, you know, you, yeah, you're, Find Another Dream. Keep pursuing it. You'll either make that dream come true or you'll die and you won't know you failed. Okay, there's one way to look at it. <laughs> there's <laughs> one way to look at it. Listen, your other dream was General Hospital. I'm so curious because you play Zara Amir, the attorney on the show, but it, 
your cerebral palsy, there was a decision made not to address it. it, it tell me the backstory there. Why was that uh, important or, or needed? Okay, so my manifesto, my goal in life is that visibly disabled roles on television should be played by visibly disabled people. I think that visible disability, much like race, can't be played. We're 20% of the population. We're only 2% of the images that you see on TV. But when I met the executive producer of General Hospital, we thought, how cool would it be to have a disabled character where she's just disabled? Yeah. It's not her storyline. She doesn't have to apologize for it. She doesn't have to explain it. She doesn't have to be healed by love because you can't heal me. It's permanent. And we wanted to just normalize and mainstream disability because we're 20% of the population. We are in every room. We are teachers, parents, girlfriends, lawyers. And we thought, how cool would it be if the only thing that makes her disabled is the fact that I am? Oh. And I have to tell you, they have been incredible accommodations because even though we don't discuss Zara's disability, and I'm coming back in the winter, so maybe we will, but, but even though we don't discuss it, the directors have been incredible mm. about making sure that I could always fit because I can run in heels, I can dance, but if I stand up, I fall down like a weeble wobble. I can't stand. So they've been amazing making sure that I'm always like leaning on desks or sitting down. I don't rise when the judge says all rise and I don't apologize for it. Oh, I love and it. I think it's so important in a fantasy world mm -hmm. like a soap opera to have yeah. disability be part of that world. Absolutely.